Thank you.
brothers and sisters in Christ. We include in today's Mass the following intentions. Thanksgiving for Sister Christie, offered by the Daughters of Mary. In honor of the Holy Family, offered by the children of the late Luis Juana Arejola. Thanksgiving in honor of the Holy Family, offered by Dr. and Mrs. Ramon de Vera and children. Thanksgiving offered by the following, Marivic Ozaki, Mr. and Mrs. Eric Arau and family, Salvation and Paminiano. Thanksgiving and petition offered by Anonymous and, Mi and Norma T. Diaz. Special intention offered by Agnes Amon. For the soul of Manuel, offered by Norma T. Diaz. For the soul of Roberto, offered by Benjola family. For the soul of Bibiano Sr., offered by Chris, Logos, and family. For the souls of Pedro and Perfecto, offered by Geriba family. For the soul of Socorro and all souls in Purgatory, offered by Maricor Rubio. For the souls of Manuela, Senos, and all souls in Purgatory, offered by Agnes Amon. For the souls of Achilles, Cheng Yong, Nixon, Salve, Gervasho, Carlito, and all souls in Purgatory, offered by Mrs. Sol Si Chai. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is Tuesday, in the fifth day of the octave of Christmas. As one family, we celebrate with our dear Archbishop his 26th Episcopal ordination anniversary. Our Mass presider is His Grace, the Most Reverend Rolando J. Tria Terona, OCD, DD, Archbishop of Cáceres. We all stand. Come 
dear brothers and sisters. So we continue to bask in the joy of Christmas and we continue to reflect on the tremendous mystery that the Lord has given us, the birth of His Son Jesus. In this season of joy, <clears throat> may I invite you as well to join me in expressing my gratitude and joy to God for the big gift of being His servant bishop among His people. My dear brothers and sisters, I am offering this Mass for all your intentions, especially for the well-being of your families and, of course, for the holiness of our Archdiocese. We bow our heads as we humbly acknowledge our sins, and together we ask the Lord to give us the grace of pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. And you plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, teach us to forgive one another, and may He bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. With joy in our hearts, we proclaim together, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord, Lord God, Lord, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. The with the Holy Spirit, Spirit in, the in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. We bow our heads, we pray. Almighty and invisible God, who dispersed the darkness of this world by the coming of your light, look, we pray, with serene countenance upon us, that we may acclaim with fitting praise the greatness of the nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> the Liturgy of the Word. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in Him. This is the way we may know that we are in union with Him. Whoever claims to abide in Him ought to walk just as He walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. And yet, I do write a new commandment to you, which holds true in him and among you. For the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, 
is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples in wondrous deeds. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord made the heavens splendor in majesty. Go before him. Praise and grandeur are in his sanctuary. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. We all stand to acclaim the Holy Gospel. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> when the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous in devout awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations in the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at that what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the full and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Please be seated. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me as I offer my Thanksgiving Mass for my 26th uh, ordination anniversary as bishop. I was ordained in Manila Cathedral by our beloved, the late Cardinal Sin of Happy Memory with Anuncio Moreni at that time. Let's now focus on the readings, on the gospel especially. <clears throat> the gospel we've heard, the gospel narrative, has two very important parts. The first one, the first part, speaks of the Blessed Mother with Joseph and Jesus, the Blessed Mother going to the temple for her purification as commanded by the law of Moses. For the days after giving birth, the woman has to be purified. And the second is the presentation of Jesus, which is also according to the law, that the eldest, the first child, should be presented to the Lord. And to express, to show that they belong to the to a poor family, to a lower class, they offered not lambs, but they offered turtle doves. But what is important in these two events put into one in the framework of the temple is the fidelity, the obedience of our Blessed Mother, of Saint Joseph, and of Jesus. Three of them, the Sagrada Familia, pay homage, worship, and express their utmost obedience to the law of God. Now, the second part of the narrative is with Simeon. Simeon who proclaims aloud his Nunc Dimitis. That, is, that part is called Nunc Dimitis, meaning, Lord, you may now dismiss me. In other words, Lord, I'm now ready to die because I've seen what you promised. And it is said that Simeon was a just and faithful man. And he was waiting for the Messiah in fidelity, in deep faith, and in living a just life. So he was a man already overshadowed by light. The light that will come to its fullest in the coming of the Messiah, in that moment wherein he himself would hold the infant Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, the light of lights, the light of the world. And with that, he was ready to be dismissed by God. Shakespeare used to say, all the world's a stage, and all men and women have exits and entrances. All of us are actors. We have our own exits and entrances. So now, Simeon is asking God, Oh God, I've seen the light. Now I may exit the drama of human living. He was just. He was living a life, uh, living in faith. He was faithful to God. He was alive in his relationship with God. But you know, my brothers and sisters, in contrast to us, who very often are living in darkness, we, who, if not dead spiritually, are languishing, are weak, are superficial, and we seldom wait for the Lord. When that grace moment comes, when Jesus, out of his mercy and love, comes to us and we discover Jesus in our life, we do not say, Lord, I'm now ready to go. Because we have had a life 
which was rather not ideal, what we say is, Lord, now I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to leave. To live with you and to live my being a disciple. To live by being your child. To live by being your servant. When one is converted, one seldom asks for death. When one is converted, one asks for the energy to live that conversion. To, so to say, make up for the sort of life that was not pleasing to God. Unlike Simeon, who lived a beautiful life, so when he discovered the Lord all the more, he was ready to go. But for us, we have been living a non-ideal Christian life. Once the Lord has come to our life, we say, Lord, we want to live. And that was the experience of St. Paul. St. Paul, who had his own mindset, a very narrow mindset, a very hard heart. When he discovered Jesus, he gave up, he gave everything for the Lord. But it came to a point that there was a longing for him to be with the Lord fully, and that would mean death. So he said, I'm torn between dying so I may be with my Lord in eternity and fully. And at the same time, I'm torn with living so I can serve my Lord on earth. So we can say, as the song goes, torn between two lovers. You know, the love of Jesus and the love of doing what Jesus asked him to do. In our case, that is also our day-by-day -day challenge. How do we live? Since every day we encounter Jesus in his words, in the gospel. Every day we receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Every day we see Jesus around among the poor, among the sick, among our families. But how do we live? In the readings we see, I was toying with my imagination. We see the Blessed Mother being purified. They went to the temple to pray. And Simeon made his Nung Dimitis Paalam, three piece. So our challenge is also three piece. We must live our lives in praise of God. Constantly praising God for His marvelous blessing upon us, which often we take for granted. Our praise is always an expression of gratitude, of thanksgiving, because the Lord has always been good to us. We should never fail to praise and glorify and thank God. The second piece, to pray. Because prayer is the means given to us by God to relate with Him and to deepen our relationship with Him. Prayer is the means wherein we acknowledge that God is our Father. We acknowledge at the same time our need of, the father, of our Father. And through prayer we recognize that on our own we cannot survive spiritually, even materially or physically. We need the help, the assistance, and the grace of God. But more than all these things, we pray because we want to deepen our relationship of father and children to Almighty God. And that is why we pray. Santa Teresa often says, to pray is to constantly have a loving and frequent conversation with someone whom we know loves us. So it's a treatment of friendship, reviving, animating that relationship of father and children with Almighty God. 
And the last P is day by day in our life, we try to proclaim pagharubay. Ibalang ibog. Jesus says, Go be my witnesses. Proclaim my teachings. And we make our proclamation not just through the pulpit or to the schools, but our life should be a proclamation of the mercy and goodness of God. We proclaim through words. We all equally proclaim through deeds, through our charitable actions. Very often they say, actions speak more than deeds. There is a Latin saying, verba movent, exempla trahunt, meaning words can move people, but example pull people. Mas balakas ang hatak ng ehemplo kesa sa tataramon, kesa sa salita. We need to proclaim. So these three, praise, prayer, proclamation as servants, they should be part and parcel of our spiritual life. They should be the pillars of our spirituality. We should not be concerned, Lord, shall I go or shall I stay? It's up to the Lord. And let us be reminded what St. Paul says, whether we live or we die, what is important is we belong to the Lord, Christi Sumus. That is what is important. And when we belong to the Lord, the three P's I mentioned must be manifested in our lives. We must be a community, persons, of praise, of prayer, and of proclamation. When we look at Joseph, the Blessed Mother, and the child Jesus, these three is what in silence we can see. They praise God for being faithful to His promise to send the Messiah. They prayed to God in the temple as faithful servants, and above all, to the Son Jesus, he proclaimed the coming of the kingdom of God, which means God definitively is now effecting our salvation. Let us be grateful for this, because this is what Christmas is all about. Please stand for the prayer of the faithful. We rejoice in the glory of Jesus Christ, who came to live with us. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer, that those who can may be generous in the help they give to the churches that are new or struggling under the direction of our pastors who oversee and direct these gracious actions, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may preserve our Archbishop in health and holiness so that he may continue to shepherd, teach, pray, and minister to God's people in our archdiocese. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord who sets captives free, raises up those who were bowed down, may prosper the work of all who labored for justice, life, and peace. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, by loving our enemies and praying for those who persecute us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are enduring a severe test of affliction, that they may also know the abundance of joy 
that God grants to sustain them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, who became poor, so that we, may, we might become rich, may take into the riches of his divine kingdom our loved ones who have gone before us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. We now pray for our personal intentions and family concerns. Father, you know the needs of the human heart. For you sent Jesus to be a human like us. We ask you to fulfill our needs, even those which we ourselves do not recognize. We ask this, Father, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The Liturgy of the Eucharist. brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in Him God made visible, we may also be caught up through Him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to you glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess a resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Rolando, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, on the faith of our community gathered before you, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. your spirit. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace to all of you. Be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pay homage to our Blessed Mother, our Ina. All together, please. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, sinners now and, and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. So before the blessing, I just would like to express again my deep gratitude for you joining me in my Thanksgiving Mass and also for my um, relatives and friends who are also joining us through live streaming. You have been part of my life, my pastoral life as a bishop, and I trust and I'm confident you would still accompany me, especially through your prayers and your kind support. And be assured on my part that you are, you are always in my intentions as I lift up the host and the wine to Almighty God, praying for your well-being, especially praying for your sanctification. We bow our heads for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace, proclaiming the goodness of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dios Mabalos, God bless you. Andiyanayanin Dios, minahayag kabos para sa kalitasan ng ka.
Kabus magdurulok sa umboy na ka.